After World War II, Europe was recovering from Nazi rule in Germany. Groundbreaking new technologies were changing the world. Class and social structures changed, more jobs were open to women, and a new youth culture defied traditional lifestyles. New technologies were developed during World War II. Post-1940 science and technology combined the theoretical and the practical. University scientists helped governments fight the war. British scientists developed radar that contributed to Britain's victory at the Battle of Britain. The atomic bomb, first tested in July of 1945, showed the heavy responsibility that came with the advancement of technology. Research during World War II led to big science, which combined theoretical science and engineering to tackle big problems. It required support from governments and corporations because it was very expensive. The United States took the lead in big science. Scientific developments continued after World War II, most notably in the United States and the Soviet Union. These two countries competed in the space race of the 1960s. The Soviets launched their first satellite in 1957 and put the first man in space in 1961. In response, President John F. Kennedy launched a U.S. effort to match the Soviets' progress and send people to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Spending up to $5 billion a year, the Apollo program reached this goal in 1969. This was a perfect example of the extreme government spending on science during this time. U.S. research attracted European scientists who feared that Europe was falling behind the United States. In 1975, there were four times as many scientists in Europe and the United States than in 1945. Growth of science increased specialization for scientists. As a result, scientists usually worked in teams and the field became fiercely competitive. After World War II, social classes in Europe became harder to distinguish. The middle class shifted from property owners to experts and managers from large organizations. It grew rapidly and was now based on specialized skills and education. It was very open and mostly democratic. The lower class changed similarly to the middle class. The number of farmers declined as people moved into the cities. Industrial work made little progress, but service employees were more needed. Reforms were made to the social security policies started by Bismarck before World War I. Increased benefits encouraged people to buy newly available consumer goods like cars, televisions, and appliances. Leisure time and vacations were now characterized by travel and tourism with the number of public beaches and resorts increasing throughout Europe. After the Industrial Revolution, women were marrying late and having fewer children. After World War II, women married earlier in life and birth rates increased rapidly. In most of Europe, the population grew 1 to 1.5% every year. But this trend slowed down in the 1960s and population growth had almost stopped by the mid-1970s. As a result, raising children was a much smaller part of the average woman's life. Most 19th century women were confined to work at home. More women worked outside of the house in the 20th century due to a number of factors. First, the post-World War II economic boom raised the demand for labor. Second, the economy shifted from hard, heavy labor to service and white-collar industries. Third, young women in the West gained access to education in the post-war education revolution. Labor in communist Eastern Europe epitomized this trend with almost half of all workers being women. As women in all countries joined the workforce, they were less willing to have children. This was the main cause of the decrease in birth rate. Women now expected to work for most of their lives. As a result, they refused to accept sexism and discrimination in the workplace. 
The economic boom and democratic class structure influenced youth in the West. A large number of people born after the war rebelled against authority. In the late 1950s, a new subculture of radical politics, drug use, communal living, and new artistic styles emerged in the United States and spread to Western Europe. Young people became more sexually active, partially because of the discovery of contraceptive pills, and many young couples lived together without marrying. The youth culture emerged for a number of reasons. First, communication and youth travel connected different countries and continents. Second, young people were a very large part of the population due to the baby boom, and as a result they had more power over society. Third, the economic boom gave young people the ability to purchase more items than before. Finally, more workers were needed, so young people were accepted and had relative freedom in the workplace. The youth culture and counterculture combined in the late 1960s as students turned to romanticism and protested the Vietnam War. Radicals believed that newly independent Asian and African countries were forming societies far better than those of the West. University attendance increased in Western Europe. As a result, classes became overcrowded and students felt that they were not receiving the education that they needed. Students challenged their universities in uprisings throughout the United States and Western Europe. The most notable of these revolts occurred in France in 1968. Students took over the University of Paris and fought police. The revolt spread across France. President Charles de Gaulle's Fifth Republic seemed to be coming to an end with the unrest. However, de Gaulle remained in power. He said that he would support university reforms and higher wages, but did not support violent and spontaneous protests from students and workers, which he referred to as bedwetting. He sent troops to Paris and imposed new elections. The people of France voted in favor of de Gaulle's party. The radical revolution ended and the old social order was re-established. The rebellion in France marked the end of an era. If the Second World War hadn't had such a profound effect on society, the world might be very different today. If it weren't for the development of big science, we might be far less technologically advanced. If the economic boom had never happened, women might have remained uncommon in the workforce.